Winter 2021 is on its way and there's no way to stop it. So come along with me and I'm going to show you five ways we get ready for another cold Colorado winter. Welcome to RV Retirement Redesign, where we are redesigning and redefining. We're redesigning our retirement and redefining RV living, not because we want a cheap way to survive, but because we want to thrive in this new season of life on our terms. For people who live stationary in their RV all year round, winters can be extreme. And here in Colorado, they are. So here are five things that we share about getting your RV ready for the cold weather. Number one is replace that hot water heater anode rod. Electrolysis will eat through the inside of your hot water tank if the current anode rod is already eaten through. So this is recommended that you do yearly and each anode rod is specific by brand and model. So make sure you know which one you need to have. This is a pretty easy process with just a few steps. And first of all, you wanna shut off the propane or electricity that's going to your hot water tank and then shut off the water supply then run back into the RV and turn your water on to make sure all of the pressure is out before you begin. Now with a hot water tank, locate the drain plug which has the anode attached to it. You'll need an adjustable wrench or socket to loosen the plug. When removing the plug, you will also release the hot water that has been left in the tank. Now you can see here where the old anode has been eaten away and what a new one looks like. Now your next step is to add sealant tape to the thread around the plug and then reattach it and tighten it once again with the wrench. Turn the water supply back on and then go in and turn the faucets on to blow all the air out. Go back out and check for leaks, and then finally turn the water heater back on. We also recommend storing your new anodes in the compartment. That way you'll always know where it's at. It's almost a no-brainer to remind you to remove your hoses from your RV, especially if they're the outside garden type. But don't forget about these ones that are connected to your RVs as well. They have check valves in them that need to be drained. and. Who knew that there'd be so much water left in here? Look at how much is coming out of here, and all of that would have froze. There's a reason why brick and mortar homes have gutters, and there are gutters on the RVs for practically the same purpose, only they're a lot more tiny. And depending on where you live, you may have your gutters full of debris like we do. So first of all, you need to secure a ladder. Make sure it's a good one that will allow you to be steady as you climb up and work on those little gutters. And you might even need a little helper with you like we have our grandson Tate with us. So the first thing that Bob did here was he was really taking a look up on the roof to check for cracks. He wanted to look for holes that might be in the roof. And he was also looking for any kind of like embedded branches or something that might have created a tear. Second of all, he started sweeping the debris off and what he tells me is that the debris is covering up the gutters, but the gutters are full of pretty much packed dirt. So again, depending on where you live, this can be more or less what you will face in your gutters as well. There were primarily three pieces of equipment that Bob used to clean out the gutters. You'll see this broom here, which he used to sweep out the debris. And then he has another smaller uh, whisk kind of a broom with a straight edge on it as well to clean out some of the deeper uh, debris, dirt, piles that were inside of the gutters themselves. Now, if you're lucky like this, Grandpa, you'll have a little helper to help you. But I did want to take just a second and talk about these um, slide toppers for a minute. 
Now, when we purchased them, we were advised we didn't need them. And I have read a lot about RVers that also recommend you don't need these. I'm just going to tell you where we live. We're very happy we have them for a number of reasons. You can see the amount of debris that's on this side. Funny enough, when Bob was on the other side, because of the way the wind blows here, there was nothing in those gutters at all. They were perfectly clean. But you saw how bad this side was. Think about the snow that piles up here as well. And as it melts, it puddles. And all of that debris, all of that snow, all of that standing water could theoretically, if we did not have the toppers, sit on top of those slides and eventually weaken or find its way into the slide out itself. Our next recommendation is for a heated water supply hose. Now ours goes underneath into a heated compartment, but if your screw's outside in a hose connection, then you need to ensure that it is um, insulated as well. It's best if they're plugged into a surge protector. And then don't forget to turn on the heaters for the holding tanks under your RV as well. So our final step is to ensure that our skirting is tight and that might be sealing up some of the duct tape. It's also about cleaning up and touching up any of the paint spots around because we really want our home RV to look nice. And we're doing this because winter's coming to Colorado. Well, we hope you liked today's video and that you found some useful information. If you did, would you do us the favor of liking and subscribing? Thanks. We really appreciate you. See you next week.